Activate defenses. Activate defenses. Commence countdown. Ten minutes and counting. Nine minutes and counting. Eight minutes and counting. Seven minutes and counting. Six minutes and counting. Five minutes and counting. Four minutes and counting. Three minutes and counting. Two minutes and counting. One minute and counting. Forty seconds and counting. Hello, David Zritsky for the Bond Experience. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome to a happy hour, a Bond happy hour. And folks, this is live. I know we've done some pre-recorded ones in the past. This one is live. Anything can happen. Uh, things usually do happen. It's usually technology issues. People just leave the chat. People enter the chat. It, it's it's a bit of a it's a controlled, chaotic mess but you wouldn't have it any other way. Uh, I'll be your host, David Zeritsky. We've got some guests coming on today, and we've got a lot to talk about. We've got upcoming events. We've got updates. We've got Bond news. We're going to take your Q&A and look, 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 look. You get to enter the chat like Mr. Chrono. Hello yourself. We've got Jack Heim here. We've got Valentino. My gosh, who else do we have here? We've got, uh, oh, look at this. It's DTUK. Hello, Bond community yourself. We've got Peter Knight. Where are you all calling from? And listen, folks, this is a happy hour. It's totally fine if you're drinking coffee, but I would like to know, what are you drinking? Like, what's your poison tonight? Um, I've got to tell you that mine is, uh, oh, hello, Oakland. Hello. Uh, mine is actually something that is specific because it was introduced to me, by the way, uh, I was going to say Durex. Durex is a condom. Duralex glass. Um, it's filled with Johnny Walker Black because one of my guests introduced this to me. Mm. And I've been drinking it ever since. So what are we drinking? Oh, well, look at this. Space Punk has a vodka and Coke. Uh, we've got, uh, oh, Michael Poplowski. Culture Bond, Blackwell Rum and Coke, very nice. Jack is drinking a, a, a Jack and Diet, which is so appropriate. A Simply Brand Limeade. That's, I guess it's Simply Brand Limeade. Yeah, okay, I'll go with it. Uh, H2O right now, but it's early. Yes, it is early. So, oh, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> British Bollinger. All right, well, you're, you're clearly slumming it. Slumming it today. Um, coffee in La La Land. That's great. Listen, Lot to go on here, but as you can see by that, you're going to be able to comment and question, especially my guests. I'm going to start to introduce my guests because we've got some great guests today that are going to help me to really talk about what's happening out there in the world of Bond, and there's a lot going on. And for those of you in the United States, you're sort of smack in the middle of a 4th of July celebration. So this is a nice little break. I don't know if you snuck away. I've got family here and I snuck away and I said, look, what am I going to do? Disappoint people? I got to do a, a happy hour. So the first one to come on board this crazy ship is a good friend of mine who probably was playing golf today because he's a bit of a golfer. You'll, you'll hear more about that in a second. And it's the one, the only Luke Taggart from Bond's apartment. What's going on, brother? Hey, David. How are you, pal? <laughs> good. Why do you sound so good? Is that a new mic? No, it's just plugged in. Damn. You no, know, I mean, I wasn't golfing today, though. I wasn't. No, you were drinking today. a long drink, according to this guy called Bond's apartment. See, every time that I do one of these, no one knows. As us on the you know panel guests don't know who's getting introduced first, so I always wait to no. see what kind of you know, like anecdotes you throw out there. And then I heard golfing and I was like, yeah, it's gotta be me. Well, usually I try to, um, this is like behind the scenes for people that care. Usually I try to do some sort of little preheat. So, you know, if it's Joe Darlington, I'll say something about him living in the basement, like things like that, just little <laughs> things. I can <laughs> or, see him in the green the room. Best. We just dropped all the M&Ms. Or being That's the crazy. best guy ever, Joe Darlington. Look at this. We've got Alex. He's saying, hi, Phil. Oh, hi, Phil in the in the chat room. Okay. Like it's his name is Luke. It's, <laughs> but Alex gets confused very easily. By the way, you are drinking a long drink tonight? He said hi, Luke, to me already. Yes. Yes, I am. For multiple reasons. Long drink number one, because I'm like the unofficial sponsor sponsor. Number two, we had the Rocket Mortgage Classic here in Michigan 
PGA for all the golf fans. Ricky Fowler won it. He is co-owner of the long drink. It's just very uh, appropriate. Nice. By the way, there's a question for you, Luke, already. I uh, did. 007 GB, I did. British fan, James Bond fan club says, Luke, hope you've got your membership pack. I did. I've been meaning a, to post about it. And honestly, I think the membership card is like right here next to that DB5. Well, somewhere. you can get it at break and, and look at your number. Do you know the number that you got? One. Yeah. One A. <laughs> no, I'd have to I'd have to go check again. What do you think? Should we invite some more people in here? Absolutely. I wonder who it could be. Well, this this next gentleman, if you see a waft of smoke come up, it's because this guy is as much as a cigar aficionado as anybody in the Bond community. It's one of the reasons why he's on today, but he's got a lot to talk about. And he's got an opinion because he's got a podcast that is still in existence, which as far as podcasts, you know very well, Luke. That's kind of a hard thing to do is to keep the podcast going, huh? Oh, absolutely. I was just talking to my wife about it today. It was hard to hard to continue to come up with things to talk about. This guy has no shortage. Welcome, Bud West. Thank you, sir. Yep, there'll there'll uh, there'll be no waft of smoke in the basement, or you would just you would see my wife come in and just haul me out of here. So, <laughs> wait a minute, you haven't yeah. put in some sort of industrial cool filter yet? Came very close. Came came very close. Then they built this great lounge around the corner, and I thought, why don't I just go to the lounge and you know, let them deal with it? Too. So I, exactly. I was very, very, very close to that. Yes. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. So, so Bud, you are allowed to drink in your man cave, and drink you do. What are you drinking tonight? Uh, so today, I, I am a Johnny Walker guy, like a lot of their stuff. I have this. It's been sitting around since Christmas. This is a uh, comes in four sampler pack. This is actually the gold label um, bottle. And um, Christmas time is a great time to pick up Johnny Walker and, and check out your liquor stores because they come out with these gift packs at Christmas. And you could try a whole bunch of them. You know, they kind of have these tiny little bottles. You might get about three glasses out of it or so. But, yeah, not so bad. It's a Johnny Walker gold label. Nice. You're going to have to tell us blow by blow how it tastes as we go through. Uh, have you tasted it yet? I've had it before. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. I, I've, I've had it Pshaw. before. It's, it's uh, mellower than the black. Yeah. But sim- Did you say mellower? Mettler? Mellower. Oh, it's, mellower. it's not Right. It's not quite as peaty. As, oh, as I like the, the PD. I like the bite of a Johnny Walker Black now. Yep. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks to your influence. By the way, <laughs> speaking of uh, influence, um, the people in the chat are being very influential right now. Oakwood Studios is banging his computer saying, "Where is being James Bond?" Yeah, let's Bond? get him well, out of that basement. Let, let's let's take him <laughs> out of here. And by the way, he's in his own studio. Uh, well done, as only oh, the yeah. head of section could be. Ladies and gentlemen, you wanted him. You got him. It costs us a lot of money. Joe Darlington, everybody. <laughs> I don't come free. <laughs> no, but you're cheap as hell. That's true. Yeah, I, but th- <laughs> thankfully, my wife unchained me and let me out of the basement. So Yeah. yeah did you have like a bunch of Fourth of July family antics that you got out of to do this? Uh, actually, Mary does have girlfriends in town. So I've been the only rooster in the hen house for a couple of days. Nice. Um, but it's been fun. It's been a lot of laughs and uh, we've been having a good time. So, so yeah, I'm, having, I'm enjoying the nice long holiday weekend. So you're like Bond when he goes to one of those pools in the Roger Moore era where it's like 20,000 women and one or two guys and that's it. Yeah, basically just, just mm-hmm. rolling around in bikinis and stuff. That's, that's yeah. pretty much, it's kind of every day of my life really, but no. All right. And, and now my channel gets shut down because you said that. There you go. Well done. Uh, Joe, what are you drinking tonight? Uh, I started with a beer this afternoon, so I decided to stick with it. So I'm doing uh, just a little Sierra Nevada here. Nice. So. Very nice. Well, listen, gentlemen and ladies and gentlemen on the chat, a toast to everybody. Happy Monday. Doesn't have to be a weeknight to do this to all of us. Cheers. Cheers, gentlemen. That's an odd looking drink, huh? It does. That looks a little. You're, you're you're looking a little cloudy there, Luke. A little spermish. <laughs> oh well. And one minute in. Well, Sorry. When it went. When it went. Yeah, exactly. I'm gonna, just going to drink. Right. Just going to drink it out of the can here. It, it. People are saying some very nice things about everybody. So we've got to really keep nice. up. Uh, we've got a happy Monday. We've got mm. cheers. Oh, look at this. We got the Bond enthusiast, Joe Silock. Hey, he'll be there as well. Oh, Joe. Joe. Hey. 
Now, listen, guys, I've got a bit of a confession as I lean into the mic close. So, I, yes, I invited you. I wanted a, a nice hour with my friends and the closest people in the Bond community, and I'm sure they wanted that as well, have a little drink on a Monday night. But I also invited you to talk about a couple of things. We're going to get to Bond news and things soon, but I wanted to talk a little bit about something happening on April 19th where all of you, all three of you are helping in some significant capacity for the next. April. Did I say April? You said April yes. 19th. Do you oh, know, I've said, like I've said nine different dates. <laughs> it's like August a weird 9th, April tax day thing. I got, I got like, nervous. <laughs> I'm like, what's, what's in April? Let's rewind that. Yeah. You're, 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 what did I get signed um, up for? Yeah. So little did you know, your taxes are actually getting a four day extension next year. And it's <laughs> August 19th. Do I have that right, go. Joe? I believe so. August 19th. Um, we are having gather all four. Now, for those of you playing along at home, let us first, 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 start off by telling you what the heck is gather all? Because some of you are kind of like, I got no idea. Um, and then we'll tell you a little bit about where it is, what it is, et cetera. But gather all essentially is just that it's a gathering of individuals in the bond community. There's no ticket price. It's a free event. You come there. If you want to drink, you pay for your drinks. If you want to eat, you pay for your eats. But other than that, it's mostly hours and hours of socializing and very often meeting people in the Bond community for the very first time. And you, 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 you make lifelong friends. You can create content. You could do pictures. Luke, let's start with you. Um, talk to us <laughs> about sort of your first experience with Gatherall and kind of what it is to you. First thing I'm going to say is, Whoever made this, even though I know who it is, really likes Joe way more than you <laughs> because he gave Joe the nice suits and he's got a so, clown so nose we, on you. So Joe and I, Joe and I <laughs> argued about not argue, we debated this, and he goes, "Are you sure you want me in the suits? Because it's kind of like me in the foreground, and it's suits. Don't you want to make me more the clown?" And I said, "Oh no." Yeah, no, you I'm are <laughs> you are the Robin to Joe's Batman, one hundred percent in this. Um, but to your question, Gatherall is uh, exactly how it sounds. It's open to everybody. It's very laid back. It's an opportunity to um, mingle with everybody who finds themselves a part of this community. And I think the best part about it is it's not, um, you know, I know probably all three of us at some point in time have talked about different type, you know, me Marvel or Star Wars or whatever. This is a much smaller more tight knit community. And I think things like this really kind of show that off. It's just showing up to, <laughs> no, I already said what it was earlier, something <laughs> way worse than that. Um, it's it just, it's very simple. You just show up. There's no obligations. You just get, you know, everybody's there to open the chat about whatever, whether it's bond or life or golf or, Indiana Jones or whatever you want to talk about. It's, it's very laid back. It's very fun. And it's uh you know, it's a great time to get to socialize with other bond fans that you probably otherwise wouldn't get to do in person because it does also attract people from a shocking amount of corners of the globe. Agree. Well said, man. Nicely Thanks. done. But Thanks. what about you? Uh, well, this will be gather all number three um, for me. And, and um, <clears throat> I think the best part, you know, is just going and meeting everybody. Um, and it, it's, you know, the one thing I think it is funny is after the gather alls are over, people will post, oh, I wish I had been a little more uh, proactive in introducing myself. And, and like, but that's the, really the whole point of this is to go to these bond events and, and meet people. I mean, I met, all three of these gentlemen that you see on here, I met them all at bond events. Um, well, I guess David was an airport, but we were on the way to a bond event. And, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so gather all, is it, you know, that's, this is the chance. Just come in, press the flesh. Um, the amount of people that show up is, is fantastic. And uh, it's always a great time. Always a great time. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's true. Joe, what about you? Got to get your take. Yeah, uh, this will be my third gather all, um, which kind of frustrates me to say, because I remember the, the last one, I kind of came down with the uh, the C word and 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 uh, couldn't make it. And I was very, very upset. Careless. About 
Sorry. Yeah, that one. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, but on, but Frank from the get go, this has just been wow. You know, I love that the, the you know, Gather All has essentially been just an organic uh, groundswell of fans who have just said, you know what? We need more stuff. We need more community stuff. We need to get to get to hang out and and talk and stuff. And um, they've been incredible. You know, they I mean, they've just been so much fun. And it's just just a great chance to meet and talk to everyone, because I mean, I said it before, I've said it many times. We'll say it many more times. You know, this community of people, we're just so damn lucky to have such a good crew uh, of people that it's just that fun to get together by the way um jordan maiden 007 said uh joe should have been the one wearing the oct octopusy clown outfit totally would have done it totally, totally was, was, was totally ready and i would have stay I tuned worn it proudly stay tuned there's still time this is true yeah well guys th thanks for doing that and and i'll tell you this is uh, well, clearly this is my fourth one um but the gather all initially started as exactly what you're all saying is that there just wasn't enough. You know, we, we kind of wait for these official events um, here in the States, especially we do not get a lot of official events. Um, we sometimes get some locational things. You have to travel to them. There just seemed to be a large contingency of people here in the Northeast. And I wanted to pull them together in a very innocuous way. Nothing overly formal. It's literally a gathering spot, like a location point meet here, and you are the secret ingredients. You have the conversations. It grew. Um, we started to have gifts and prizes and, uh, you know, types of trivia. And we had little events and many things. What what I've come to realize, though, oh my God. is that look it is not about... <laughs> oh my Luke's not happy I used that picture. That's a stuffed sausage in that picture. <laughs> he's, he's lost weight. Um, but it, it's turned into sort of a, a community committee meeting where the trappings, even where it is, is much less important than who comes. And, you know, the last one that we had, uh, this gentleman right here is a pilot from Israel. He mm -hmm. flew from Israel to be here. We've got people that come from all around. Um, they, they, they love on pillows. Um, they close their eyes during pictures and refuse to open them. Oh my you know, God. they, they try to steal my, my Tom Ford Harrington and walk out the door like Alex did. Um, you know, all these types of things where we've just all come together this time around though, in the last iteration, we had to limit it because of the size of the space. And it was horrific. It was like voting people off the Island. We had, Almost 185 people say they wanted to come, and we only were able to bring in about 100 people. That means 85 people did not get to go. Or mm -hmm. the people that came wanted to bring their aunt, their uncle, their son, their spouse. And we said, I'm sorry, you can't. Well, no more, because this is going to be an entire day event. And the spaces that we've, we have basically before us really kind of took this small distillery. By the way, check out in the background. I spy with my little eye, Daniel Craig holding his hand up, trying to get uh, the bad guy from not killing his daughter. I don't know. I, I didn't pick that <laughs> picture on purpose. How sweet. Um, but this time around, we're really not limited. I mean, people can really show up. And now because of that, we've got people without exaggeration coming from Canada, California, Sweden, uh, London from all over their booking. And we're going to discuss a little bit about what the day is turning into and maybe even what the weekend is turning into. Um, so August 19th, Bud, let's talk a little bit about how the day is starting, what time and <clears throat> what have you organized? So we're going to repeat what we did before the last gather all because it went really well, but this time we're going to take it up a notch. Um, so back in April, we held a Bond Community Cigar Lounge event at the Casa de Monte Cristo Lounge at JR Cigars. Now, this place is, is around 20 minutes from the clubhouse where the main event is. So at 11 a.m., anyone who would like to come and have a cigar, join us at the Casa de Monte Cristo Lounge at JR Cigars. This is an absolutely fantastic location 
it's been featured in Cigar Aficionado magazine. And, you know, you're talking about a magazine that comes out with six issues a year. They pick one high end lounge per issue to highlight. So over the years, they don't really highlight that many lounges across the country. And this place kind of made the cut. Uh, there's a 5,000 square foot humidor. There's no entry fee to come in. There's a bar. You can get libations. They have just two rules. Uh, if you're going to smoke it there, you have to buy it there. And if you're sitting in the cigar lounge area, you need to be actively smoking because the lounge seating is, is for smokers. But you do not have to be actively smoking to sit at the bar. So you can come in and just go to the bar and hang out. Uh, Michael Poplaska, the culture of Bond, and I had an event back there in April. Um, it, it was it was just a phenomenal location. And, and being that cigars, you know, for many of us, having a cigar is a Bond moment. It, it's no different than having a, a Vesper or putting on that black tie because, you know, the rich history of cigars. I mean, with the exception of George Lazenby, every actor in the Bond franchise has at least one film where there's cigars in the films uh less so in the connery era and the dalton era and the but roger moore phenomenal cigar guy even in the films where moore doesn't have a cigar you know you, you see between the between takes photos from the set and stuff he's playing backhammer with cubby broccoli or he, he's just you know standing you know standing there sitting there with his co-stars he always seems to have a cigar um brosnan and the scenes from die another day and uh i've always loved that they gave on a top a cigar in golden eye i mean because it used to be that cigars were only for men but nowadays that's just not true i mean the lounge i belong to is managed and partially owned by a woman and and they have ladies nights they have ladies nights at other cigar lounges sorry <laughs> yeah it's the a ladies. direct quote don't hate on me she's a dancer right. <laughs> but so join us. We're going to go from about 11 till 2.30. It's only 20 minutes away from the clubhouse. Um, and it's actually, from where the hotels are, it's about 10 minutes one way and then 10 minutes the other way to the clubhouse. So it's, it's really, you know, close by, absolutely huge location. Um, the, the, David has a picture of the, of the um, humidor up, if you could throw that humidor up, a 5,000 square foot humidor the humidor is so big the checkout counters inside the humidor uh it, it, <laughs> by right, the way if you but, want, there's a couple ahead. of comments where um people are saying you know are they gonna stink to high heaven coming to gather all but correct me if i'm wrong if i remember correctly this place is vented incredibly well and professionally yes so when you get to a higher level lounge such as this you're not going to come out of there reeking like a cigar um the, these places right. will drop a million bucks on their on their air scrubbers and their ventilation yeah so i go in there i leave i don't smell like a cigar unlike my local lounge this <laughs> this place is this place is a way higher end when it comes to that i wouldn't worry about it you know you're you're not gonna smell all you know you're not gonna reek of cigars let's put it that way Exactly. And by the way, one of the things is, is that there were people coming from far and wide. There is some potential things brewing on Friday, um, but we're not ready to announce those yet. We're talking about, obviously, this starting at 11 and going to 2.30. So those of you, um, even if you just want to go over and have a cigar um, and have a conversation and have a drink to kind of meet up with people, it's a great way. We know the bulk of the people won't be doing that, but What's great is Bud has volunteered to give people a, a talk, a panel, information. I mean, there's some really great things that are brewing, but we wanted to sort of extend the day because we know people are coming far and wide. And then, of course, at three o'clock, the doors open. Now, before we go to the next slide, let me tell everybody something because I, I think you like kind of behind the scenes. So at the last gather all, and this was in December, everybody kept saying one is not enough. One time a year is not enough. You should really do a, a summer gather all. And some people even said, oh, David, you get a big backyard. You should have um, a picnic. You should have a barbecue in your backyard. And because I want to stay <laughs> married, safe. because I want to stay married, um, I said, yeah, okay, thanks. No, 
But um, I immediately spoke to Joe and Joe actually said, I got a great place. And he and I did a whole scouting session. I did a video with him where we kind of put it up around this amazing, amazing place. And the place is called the Clubhouse. And it not only can house this amazing community, but um, well, Joe, tell us a little bit about the Clubhouse and why you recommended it to begin with. Yeah. Yeah. Um- it's funny. My, my connection to this place is a, it's, it's a family connection. My daughter-in-law was working there. Um, her boyfriend uh, was one of the, the managers there. So my wife and I, we sort of got dragged there almost by accident. Um, hey, do you want to go see the new place where they're working and see? It was really early on. They were still, I mean, it, it almost looked just sort of like a, a warehouse, you know, I mean, it, it, there was not much there. Um, so we, and, and we, we were going every so often just to sort of, you know, be nice and, you know, buy a couple drinks, leave big tips, etc. We watched this place evolve. Like we said, I mean, they, I'm only going back a few months cause they, someone right. had just bought it. They just renovated the whole thing. So we watched this thing fall, everything, watching everything fall into place. And we just kind of fell in love with this place. Like this place was just, I, I, I was just loving everything that they were doing. It was so like, I mean, honestly, if I, if I had bought my own place and wanted to put something together, it, it I kind of felt like, boy, this is right in line with um, what I would want. And I mean, Mary, my wife and I have gone there a few times. We were there just this past Friday because there was a guy who does Sinatra music. He was playing in the front room. Uh, so we just we like I said, we, we've just sort of fallen in love with this place. And frankly, it was pretty early on that I was looking at it, looking at the space and just saying, you know what? I could totally see a gather all happen here. I, I said th- this to me is the perfect spot. Uh, not only is I mean, the theme obviously is golf. You know, this is this is a place that has these the, uh, the golf bays set up. Um, Dave's got a picture up. You can see where people will swat the balls and it'll tell you where you're hitting, how your hitting is doing. Um, but hey, the, Joe, I yeah. got something better for you. Go I can take it. you through. Why don't you tell us kind of what what sure. the vision is? Because one of the reasons why I wanted to partner with Joe is number one, this is a much much bigger event than our last gatherals. This is turning into a mini convention where we have <laughs> some Bond alumni coming. We've got games and trivia and brands, et cetera. It's turning into something much ba- bigger than we had before. But Joe, you had a particular vision. Why don't you kind of walk us through? Because this is not the whole space. What are we looking at right here? Yeah. Uh, this is the front room. Uh, when you first walk in, this is sort of what you see. And it's, it's this gorgeous little restaurant area. And again, it's, it's funny that this is only the front room. You know, when I first started going there, this, this was empty and I mean empty. Um, but yeah, it's this really beautiful, warm, uh, front room. It's almost got kind of a ski lodge sort of a a way to it, but it's like, it, it's got that rustic but modern rustic sort of feel to it. So, I mean, they, they really just did a spectacular job putting this together. Uh, so, yeah, so this is the front restaurant area. And by the way, you correct me if I'm wrong, but your idea was to kind of take this area and turn it, transform it, so to speak, into a kind of a, a bluesy Bond jazz lounge with like Bond jazz music. Is that right? Yeah, I, I mean, I kind of felt like this is probably the, the place where you want to go if it's maybe too noisy in the other room, if you want to come up front and just sit down and, and relax and, and chit chat, uh, catch up. This is sort of the place to do it, you know, I, and, and again, there's there's bars in both the front room and the back in this room. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's 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 just to me, it's just a, a grand slam home run. Yeah, absolutely. And by the way, um there is, you can't see it, but even before you walk in, there is an outdoor area with like AstroTurf and sand and beach. So they've created like a beach and a golf course outside in the parking lot where you can eat, drink, and smoke. That is unbelievable because in years past, you had to go outside into town. You had to leave to eat. You had, and and, and to get a breath of fresh air, this, mm. you literally park and you stay 
which is yeah. amazing. And then yeah. Joe, you walk into the main crazy Elliot Carver room. Tell us about this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is uh, right. So you walk in and this is the big, much more open area. Uh, there, this is where it, like from the, the point of view that we're looking at right now behind us would be the golf base. What's in front of us is the big spacious dining area where people can again commiserate you can see there's a bar on the right side it's a big rounded off bar i mean they really did an incredible job with this and then of course like all the screens i mean these these screens are incredible the big screen to the left is probably the biggest one i've ever seen frankly uh so yeah i mean it's it it, it really is just spectacular and one of the great things is for everybody that um can visualize what's happening here in years past, we were at a distillery, so you were kind of at the, you know, the 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 whim, if you will, of what they had at this little mom and pop distillery. Here, you have every libation known to man, and Joe, not to not to create any spoilers, but I hear that the owner is so excited that he is creating a personalized James Bond cocktail list. Is that true? Yes. Um, incidentally, and I, I was literally just there this afternoon, which is by the way, why I'm sticking to, to beer. Cause when, when I walk in there, um, they kind of know me enough to, they, they set me up, but like, Oh, I know what you like. And they give me my beer. Uh, so yes, I got a little insight just this afternoon and I tell you the staff there is tremendous. I mean, they, they are a really great bunch. I mean, when, you know, again, like I said, I, I've, I've kind of started to meet people, because to you know because they're family um i got to meet rich who is one of the owners and he uh, specializes in the events and you know and it was sort of funny because dave and i sort of went and when we we sort of explained gather all it was it, it was kind of tough to sort of verbalize and to, to put into words exactly what it is uh it, I, I said it's somewhere in between like you know a corporate event and just a little fan gathering, you know, it's, it, we're, we're sort of in, in there somewhere. Uh, Rich has been spectacular and he really did take the reins on this and he got very excited about the idea. And yes, I, I, I got a little, little sneak preview of, of some of the drinks that they've already put together for this. And I'm just loving it. Like it's, it's just, I'm like, Oh, this is great. This is spectacular. And correct me if I'm wrong, Joe, you, you had talked about this being kind of golf, what am I looking at here? We've got a couple pictures. Uh, it looks like one of the bays. Yeah, it's interesting. Like I said, it's 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 great because this is a perfect place. Like if you are into golf, this is a place you want to get. And if you're in the area, this is a place you want to get to know. Uh, when the weather's not great for being out, uh, you go and you set yourself up. You smack the golf balls into these little bays, and the computer will tell you where your ball went if you. You know, if you're if you're slicing to the right or the left or whatever, so it's a, it's a really a great great place and a great way to relax, grab a cocktail, grab some food, smack some golf balls, and kind of work on your swing a little bit. It's it's really a lot of fun, and of course, there's a lot of different ways that like you can sort of play against each other. Um, you know, there's a diff lot of different programs that they run. I don't, you know, I don't know the all of the details in it, but yeah, it's I mean, it's, it really is just a, a fantastic. It's a grand slam. I mean, like, like yeah, booze and, and, and golf balls. It's, it's perfect. <laughs> we love it too, because one of the things I left with when I went there with Joe to do a kind of a scouting run is they've got these comfortable couches, you know, they're showing movies and, you know, obviously they're going to have audio uh, banching in, but it's got these really personal and intimate places that we can go. But because it's golf, we are asking people to kind of bring it to the next level. And Luke, um, Correct me if I'm wrong, but that's a picture of you. In the Bahamas, yeah. Yeah, I don't know why. I didn't realize I sent you such a blurry, terrible picture. I apologize. Um, yeah, that's me <laughs> golfing in the Bahamas on our honeymoon. Yeah. So what, do you, what are you going to be helping us with on this uh, extravaganza journey that we're having? Because it is golf-themed. So... I'm going to try and, you know, I've, you and I have talked about this. I'm going to reach out to, to, am I able to say who's going to be there as a. Not yet. You're trying okay. to, you're trying to probably trying to get a uh, well-known. Uh, <laughs> yes. Golf uh, Tiger group. Woods will be there for us <laughs> all. And uh, no, so I am, I am going to be uh, reaching out to somebody who I know David of our has already spoken to. 
But uh, there's going to be, you know, somebody had mentioned it in the comments earlier about doing trivia and prizes. Of course, as usual, at gather all that will be a big part of it. Um, there's going to be, as David mentioned, some different people there and maybe some brands or whatever, and maybe working on doing some golf golf themed kind of um, games, I guess you yeah. could say. And, and if you win the games, maybe give away some sort of uh, bond themed prizes. So um, from a golf standpoint, David had asked me to kind of co-host in a sense because I'm a golf freak. And uh, I don't know, maybe something along the lines of like jump into one of the bays. And if you can beat me at something, you'll win something <laughs> to well, be and, determined. And the other thing is just there's going to be so many people that I think are going to want to embrace these things because it is a little gold fingerish. So, I mean, I had to find somebody that knew much more about golf than me. I mean, Joe knows a lot about the golf bays, but I figured we have a bond expert that knows about bond golfing. So mm -hmm. it's a great picture, by the way. It looks like God Thank shining you. on you, Luke. What is that? That is just my wife. <laughs> She's not. Oh. Here. No, that is. Yeah. That I think is, that's your is. wife. That's that's my I wish it was my wife on the left. Ricky Fowler. Um, that's my wife on the right. Yes. Yes. Beautiful and perfect as she is. Um, but How, yeah, I who's, mean, who's Fowler? Ricky. Ricky Fowler is. Oh, Ricky Fowler. Uh, so he is a uh, very, very popular PGA golfer. He was just in town in Detroit for a PGA event called the Rocket Mortgage Classic. He actually ended up winning. We took this picture, I think, on Tuesday or Wednesday. I usually volunteer at it every year. It's it's kind of an easy way to get unprecedented access to the players. So uh, it was nice to be able to take this picture with him. And a lot of people say he and I look like brothers, which I will take because I think he's a handsome lad. No, uh, you could look at him without turning into stone. So he yeah. doesn't look like you. Uh, oh. By the way, Sean Parker's already saying golf challenge accepted. Which Excellent. Is I, hey, here's the deal. Yeah, I'm, not, one opponent. Yeah. I'm not saying it's going to be a difficult challenge for you. I'm just saying as the as the resident golf uh, fanatic, I will be uh, hopefully one of the people that you can go up against to win some something Good. cool. By the way, we, we do have I mean, there's a lot of hotels, <laughs> folks. People, this is becoming very popular. We have two hotels that have sold out the Double Tree by Hilton in Fairfield, New Jersey is still available. That's where myself and other people will be. I hear rumors there may be an afterglow after party going on when this all shuts down, but stay tuned for that. So if you're looking for a hotel, Double Tree by Hilton and Fairfield is a great one. Uh, they've got a pool. What can you do? You can replicate the Pierce Brosnan swimming in Goldeneye. The on a top scene, you could do that. Um, there's a <laughs> reaching. There's a great no, bar. No, no, great, no, 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 no more full there, play. There's a great outdoor area. Um, and then what we're also trying to do, stay tuned. We are trying to see if we could possibly do a brunch on Sunday the next day because a lot of people are hanging out. And this is one potential that we may be looking to to actually have a bit of a brunch where we can all say hellos and goodbyes to each other. But it's one of these things that we want to start galvanizing around. We are going to be having some sort of system that people can raise their hand and say, we're going. We weren't going to do that, but we need some sort of commitment, especially for the clubhouse to say, well, there's going to be 150, there's going to be 200, 225. Now we're scared. So we are going to have some system to do that. Right, Joe? Yes, um, it's still in the works. Uh, basically, we're trying not to, A, not to overwhelm the nice people at the clubhouse. Um, and basically, they want to just say, you know, they've said, we want to know just how prepared we should be, what people want, et cetera. So we are going to set something up like a little, they're going to, and, and again, they, I've already seen some of the things that they're working on, and it's absolutely incredible. So they're going to put together a little landing page so people can sort of go in RSVP and 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 um, nice. uh, possibly you know take some make, maybe pre-order some food that kind of thing. Uh, so again, that way the clubhouse is able to sort of um, you know accommodate us accordingly. And then again, they've been absolutely terrific with it so far. So I think uh, that, like I said, I, I love how excited they are for this whole thing. So. 
I'm just, I, I mean, I'm in their capable hands in there and it's going to be great. Yeah. Cause so far we've got about 140 people that have said yes. That's yeah. going to climb very quickly as we get closer and closer. So we're just trying to keep this organized, but listen, that is the event. Gentlemen, We've got a lot of people on this chat right now, and I know a lot of them came here to pick our brain. They're going to come to gather all four, but they came to pick our brain. I'd like to start out because this is your opportunity. Everybody in the chat room, I want you to start submitting questions, and you can be direct to who you want the questions to go to. But but let's start with you. Talk to us about the state of things in the world of Bond right now. Give us your opinion and your take. I think we're into the uh, the, the lulls that, that we hit during these times, and uh, we don't really get much in the way of news. You know, it's up to the content creators and everyone out there to kind of keep the fire going right now. Um, but you know, I, Eon is always seems to be like this. They're, they're very tight lipped, and you see all these speculative articles about. You know, it's going to be this guy or that guy or this person or that person. And you know, you get these downtimes. And for those of us old enough to remember the six year gap where they couldn't make movies years ago, yeah. um, it, it's actually, you know, I think it's better now. You know, we have all the social media. Yeah, you we didn't have all that back then, though, Luke. So it was like, yeah, you just, right, right. Yeah, you just prayed for TBS's, you know, or TNT, whatever that was, his <laughs> bond month. So you could Spike, watch a whole bunch yeah. of. Right. Um, and, it, and it also wasn't so easy for everyone to kind of own the movies and stream the movies and stuff back then. So yeah, I think the true. gaps, at least for me, are, are easier to take now. But. Oh, yeah. Agreed. Who knows? Agreed. You know, who knows? And I think we're filling them up in a better way with content. I think people are, yeah. are more established. We've seen some people come and go. By the way, there is a question. I've got to I've got to have Luke field this one. Luke, I know that you were checking your text. I hate to interrupt you. But um, uh, but there was something that said, oh, I just lost it. Oh, here it is. Thanks. Visco, Visco Gomez says anything to do for the wives at Gatherall? Are well, the wives welcome? I, I, I was going to say, I was going to touch on this because Joe was doing an incredible job of explaining the the venue. I mean, and I think Joe kind of alluded to it. It's not just a golf thing. It's just a big, big venue with a lot to do. It, it looks like there's an incredible, at least two bars in there. I mean, there's mm -hmm. tables, there's couches, there's, you know, one of the things I'd say at, although it is a blast when we do it in Newtown, it is a smaller venue and it's kind of a longer, narrow venue. It's kind of like in order to get to a specific spot, you kind of have to go through the whole crowd. It seems like here, you know, if a couple of ladies come and they want to kind of stop texting me from Taylor's with Love, he wishes. <laughs> I don't have your phone yeah. number, man. <laughs> but I'm waiting for it. I've only asked 20 times. Um, but no, well, Luke, it, it the is. Women, the women tend to, um, they have a great time. It seems they flock like, together. And they also, oh, yeah, they sometimes do. they galvanize yeah. together yeah. too. Yeah, no, my wife told me she definitely had a great time at the last one. But I mean, similar to me, um, one AJ. of the things AJ, AJ, no, <laughs> one, of the, AJ. one of the biggest, AJ. Uh, man talk. Yeah, that's right. Man. Mean at work, <laughs> mean at work, mean at work. Um, Say goodbye, one of the AJ. biggest things my wife said, which I actually said the same thing, was just kind of not having enough time to talk to everybody and i mm -hmm. think the biggest thing with that is yeah. is really just kind of the size of the venue i know it kind of maybe makes sense to some but it's like if the venue's bigger and there's a spot where you're talking to somebody say hey let's go step over here and talk a little quieter and get to know each other then you can kind of do that with different people or a small group of people right. and then you know select a new group of people and just kind of get to know everybody where before it's it's very compact and it's just kind of a lot going on and even if somebody kind of slides on by, then they want to start talking. It's like here, I feel like you have a lot more room to, to work. Yeah, you're right. I mean, that's, that is the thing. I, I remember last time, just in December, leaving gather all three and just thinking like, Oh my gosh, I hardly got time to really chat to that person. It's because you sort of get caught in a small corner in a bigger venue. You can kind of go out, have a little bit of a pulpit, um, we are going to have mics. Uh, yes. And by the way, some people were asking, we are going to have trivia and games. We're taking it sort of to the next level. You'll see. Um, there is going to be, um, let's just say, some missions and assignments. 
and not just <laughs> trivia games going on. Um, that, that was a bad tick, but it was that, also that, for me trying it to It looked like you. It looked like you flipped your hair back. It, like it's if I had long blonde hair, something. I would have flipped it like this and been like. <laughs> Mission and assignments, right? So oh, good Lord. Missions and assignments, right? Exactly. Missions and assignments, so to speak. There's so an Aston Martin good. outside. I'm going to need two coats of wax on that and uh, that kind of mission. <laughs> <or no? laughs> yeah, that's that's the thing. I don't know if uh, if people want to bring their nice cars. You know, we can even do like a mini car show outside. <laughs> I mean, the world's our oyster. It's uh, it's absolutely something we can do. The only thing we're not going to do is a push-up contest. <laughs> um, no, thank you. Didn't because you see that picture David showed of me? We do a push. <laughs> Good guy. It's hard to do when you're drinking. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, Joe, I would like to get your opinion too, and this may spark some of the discussion as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of the things that happens at these gatherings is, of course, people talk about the State of the Union of Bond. It seems likely that we're not going to get any announcements this year about directors or actors. I don't know. Maybe that's just me being practical, realistic, negative. Um, mm. What are your thoughts on the subject? Uh, I would say it's probably very fair to say, yes, we're not going to hear any substantial announcements anytime soon. Uh, but again, the beauty of gather all is it, it is, it is the meeting of minds. You know, I, I find that when you, when we do these sort of events and we, we start to talk to all the other bond fans, I find that what comes out are all these sort of like, fan theories that people have had and like, Oh, I can't wait to, to, to tell somebody about this or, you know, Hey, what do you think about this? And, you know, something that happened in some film years ago. So, you know, it, it kind of goes to show like, Oh yeah, there's always, there's always something to talk about. People have always got, we've always got material. And by the end of the night, even though you're completely spent, it's like, I could still go on, you know? It's true. It's almost yeah. like, you know, the, the things that we enjoy watching on YouTube or like in podcasts, they happen in these little mini forums right. mm -hmm. at yeah. a gather all, which is crazy. Yes, they happen in real life, in real time. So you're right. You're, you're, you're engaged in it. Yeah. Yeah. How Luke, how much do you think, because I, I see the chat going on. I mean, how much do you think the quietness of Bond right now, even, I mean, today um, they had, a 007.com store, they had a Dr. No Bear come out and it was all the rage. <laughs> I'm being sarcastic. Um, the rage of who? <laughs> yeah. But I mean, there Angry just rage. seems to be, even Outrage. from a product standpoint, it <laughs> seems to be so quiet right now. Where do you think this, as, as, as Bud put it, this sort of gap is coming from? Oh God. I mean, can I be blunt here? Can I go back to my roots and be blunt here? I, <laughs> I, I think there's a, a few different things. I think, uh, God, I don't know how blunt David thinks I'm going to get. I think Eon is not entirely, you know. And I, that's, that's our show. So uh, <laughs> we'd like to thank every one of our guests. And again, this has been brought to you by Eon, the people that brought you. Bon no, I'm kidding. No. Oh, my God. He's been, he's been shot and killed. You killed him. This is what I was afraid of. Eon is a very, <laughs> very powerful group. Yeah, right. <laughs> like they, like they, they, they would take Luke, the Luke, you could say anything. They have people want. everywhere. No, it's as simple as I, you know, we've, there's a lot going on. I think, um, you know, I think there's, um, I don't know, maybe a little bit of complacency just with management there. I think they're not as enthused about the whole product as we are and not, that they shouldn't be. I mean, I think it's still something people really want to see. It's, I mean, look at what we're doing here. It's clearly a lot of people care about it. Huge. And it's, um, I just, I, it, to me, David, you said it yourself, you and I were talking a little while ago and it's kind of like if this, if no time to die was officially in the can, probably in what 2019, what the hell was going on for three years here? You know, why weren't we looking towards the future? So I think there's just a lot of, you know, people doing, you know, whether and not even to bad mouth on just doing different things. You know, I know Barbara produced different, different um, interests and different. Focuses. Yeah, Daniel Craig's play. And I know I think there was a documentary. It's, you know, but I think where other studios or production companies can, uh, you know, produce a lot at once. I feel like they're very let's take on one thing at a time. And even though Bond is their biggest and it's the reason it's a thing, you know, which to our dismay is kind of like well, what are we doing here? Um, you know, it's like, it's, it's, 
what we're doing is great because you know kind of to bud's point it's like if it wasn't for stuff like this we would probably have a whole lot of nothing where you know a lot i know a lot of people give star wars a lot of flack because some of the things they come out with is aren't great but you know if they come out with 10 things and two or three of them are great it's better than the zero things that we get for three four or five years in my opinion so it's doing things like this or gather all or our youtube channels or the podcasts or any of that that kind of keep all of this going in my opinion the bootstrapping no it's important yeah. and but there's there's kind of a serious question i'd like you to kind of handle it i mean joseph a good friend of ours joseph who goes to a lot of these gather alls he says i hope the community mm -hmm. doesn't dwindle a bit due to the gap we're going through i mean we've seen friends of ours who are no longer engaged with bond i mean content creation aside i mean there, that that takes a lot of work and we don't measure people on how many freaking posts they make it's it's extremely difficult doing that type of thing but just people that just aren't interested in bond anymore do you think that there's a danger with this gap between movies yeah, I think there's probably a sweet spot there. I mean, it, it's not the 60s, you know, where we're going to get a movie every year or two, and we can't expect that. But I, I think with anything, any franchise, there's probably a sweet spot. If you do it too often, like Star Wars doesn't really have some very good numbers right now, and there's so much Star Wars content now. I think they might be doing a little too much. But then again, if you wait too long then you're going to get the same thing you just described. People are dropping off. People are starting to lose interest. People kind of fade away or they pick up another interest just to fill the gap. And they think, and then they never end up coming back to, to bond. I, I years, I was a big baseball fan. There was a big baseball strike. I started doing other stuff and I never really went back to being that huge baseball fan anymore. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I, I wonder if, if that, is definitely going to be the case but yeah i think there's a danger there if you if they wait too long you're going to start to see people drop off yeah and um but then again if you do it too much people are going to say yeah that's just what we need another bond you know it's too much i don't bond think i don't think there's a danger of it's that too much <laughs> we do have a we do have a bond oriented tv show coming up i mean we have where double o's on, uh, I believe it's Amazon Prime. The double no, 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 no. I mean, where is it? Oh, it well, yeah, in advertising. So it was announced <laughs> that's, that's three years it. ago. Yeah. Um, then they announced about a few months ago. They announced a, a host, the guy that yeah. was going to host it, O'Brien Cox. But then again, we haven't seen anything else. Yeah. And even the video game. Somebody in the chat just mentioned the the video game that was announced too. And then again. Yeah. We we well, we haven't seen that. Maybe so, my kid you, will play it. Who's not right. born? <laughs> well, let's 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 talk about kids because Joe. Maybe people don't know this. Joe is Grandpa Joe. He's not just head of section. He's got a second <laughs> title. He's Grandpa Joe. And Joe, we've got a good question from Russ. That's nine, a handsome six, grandpa nine, right six, there. Nine, six, two. <laughs> By the way, Joe, everybody's been. I mean, we've got four comments already saying you're. You look like you've lost weight. So. You look marvelous. Well, I was just going to say, I think that is actually the, the the most important part of what we're talking about. The uh, I saw I saw one dang Joe losing weight at a boy. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> very very true. And um, and not not to be that guy who has to constantly pull out pictures of the grandkids, but uh, I'm going to be that guy. Oh, no. And uh, like, just tell me this is not the most freaking cutest kid you've oh. ever seen in your entire life. <laughs> oh, very, wait a minute. <laughs> I think her mom might yell at me. Let, let's see that, that again, again, Joe. Let's see it again. <laughs> that is a girl who has no like, idea the shit we have to deal with with this Bond stuff. <laughs> she just looks like a happy gosh. camper. Ma Mary nope. and I have figured out how to make our phones have her picture come up and have it change every hour. And like complete dorks, Mary and I will take screenshots and send it to each other every hour on the hour. <laughs> Here's the one that just came up now. By the so, way, Joe, have you bought that child like 007 onesies or anything like that or uh no no but it's funny because her her grandmother is heard somewhere that baby shouldn't watch tv so i'm like okay yeah yeah no no we won't watch tv and then of course when grandma's not around this is james bond honey this is james bond you're we're, we're, we're gonna be we're gonna be talking uh -huh. about james bond a lot in the future that's, that's exactly. what grandparents are for to let I you see do a, the stuff. That, I see a Bond's yeah. apartment onesie in Joe's future. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, for him, 
for him. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, correct. diaper included. Joe, what do you um go go forward? You know, I think the child should be at least three years old before they watch a Bond film. <laughs> so three years old birthday Bond's party the for the, your uh, grandchild. Which Bond film do you choose for a child? What's the first Bond film? Uh, boy, that's a great question. I, I, I feel like... It's the only kind I have. Yeah, so. I, I feel like I want to say... Because it was funny because the first one that happened to be on TV, and of course, when it's on, I can't not watch it, was Casino Royale. It, it just happened to be on, and I kind of was watching it again, and she happened to be there. And I was like, boy, I just... This By the way, play along in the chat. Tell us <laughs> how old was your first Bond film watch and which one would you show a young child? Because some people are saying Moonraker, Moonraker, Moonraker. <laughs> it's, I, you know, and, and I, I kind of agree with that. You know, it's funny. I, I had someone re just yesterday, I think. I got like a comment on like my Die Another Day review and somebody sort of said something to the effect of like, guys, while you're ripping on this movie, you might want to remember that this is how younger generations, it's films like these. And I said, 100%, 100%. There are some really great, fun Bond movies that, you know, that, that, that mm -hmm. the younger crowd seemed to be drawn to. Uh, same with video games, too, by the way. Uh, so, yeah, I, I mean, that's but that, and again, that's the that's the beauty and the magic of the James Bond films is that there's something for everybody. There's something for every age level. There's something for every mood. You know, I mean, it's it's absolutely spectacular. So not licensed to kill. I'm going to say no. Not no gonna, time gonna, to die. Gonna, gonna say, gonna say, yeah, maybe we won't start with that one. We might end with that one. But. <laughs> hey, 15 year old going through puberty. You want to be depressed for another seven years? What's wrong? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Luke, I could see you doing that though. By the way, Luke, you would do that to like a friend's child. Like, hey, you want to yes. get him off a of bond? A friend's <laughs> child that like is annoying as hell. I'll be like, you know what? I don't know how to shut you up. Watch no Come time here, to die. Timmy. Yeah. And then they're calling me like once a week, like, I haven't left the house. Four We've got eights. a lot of people choosing uh, Octopussy. And interestingly enough, I don't know if I would have uh, guessed this one, Tomorrow Never Dies as well. But it is, Tomorrow Never Dies is just nonstop fun. I yeah. mean, for attention, you know, people that. with little attention like me, it's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Goldeneye was mine, of course. But that was, you know, video game to That was your first film, and then Well, yeah, because the video game, you know, I played the video oh, game. Right, right. Then yep. my brother, my older brother said there's a film. And then I watched the film. And then from there, I think... Tomorrow Never Dies was already out, so I watched Tomorrow Never Dies, and then I mm -hmm. went all the way to the beginning. You know, every I feel like up Mike. Until. I feel like Mike Poplowski, um didn't get the uh, the memo correctly. <laughs> Mike is confused, and you know we almost lost him about six times in Goldeneye when we oh, went there. Uh, one scuba <laughs> diving. Maybe he's got like a head trauma or something. <laughs> no, no, he's a good guy. He's a good guy. No, By the from way, Goldeneye, um, when you lost them. I'm going to ask everybody not to mention Diamonds Are Forever as a child's first film, just so great Wuta can get to sleep tonight. That would be great. Yeah. <laughs> but what was your first Bond film that you saw as a young person? Uh, <laughs> Joe and I have talked about this. The first, the first... You know, I don't remember the television shows because I, I bought like, you know, when they would show them on TV because I would only catch bits and pieces. I can remember the first time I went to see a Bond film in a theater and it was Octopussy. And I just remember oh, going nice. to the theater and walking out and thinking, I just paid like six, eight bucks to watch my old man run around, shoot people and get lucky. Because, oh. you know, I'm like a teenager at the time. And I was like, I was just so <laughs> totally Snap. unimpressed <laughs> and it, it wasn't i didn't even go see a view to a kill after that like wow right but then the living daylights came out and i was running a movie theater so i saw everything i saw them for free and when they changed it i was a little older bond was a little younger it yeah it was that's when it all that's when it all kind of sunk in and kind of changed for me and I was a huge video game guy back in when Goldeneye came out, but I never played it. Yeah, that's fair. By the way, um, there were a couple people that had sent me messages, not to jump back and forth a little bit, but um, depending on, <laughs> we're, we're going to have sort of a landing page for people to kind of say, yes, we're going to gather all four. Um, we also are trying to get an idea of, how long people are going to be because some people are coming from far and wide some people like luke luke i know is coming friday saturday and sunday 
um, how many of those people we we may have besides brunch something going on, something active on Friday. I think I made mention there is something that may be planned on Friday that is a little bit more bond action oriented. So stay tuned. I know we're getting a lot of questions in the chat about that, but the we've got a long way until April 19th. No, I'm kidding. August 19th. <laughs> um, we've got a long <laughs> way until that. My tax is done. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And by the way, for those of you whose first Bond movie was something with uh, Mike <laughs> Myers, I pity you. I pity you. Yeah, babe. All right. Well, listen, we are keeping true. Believe it or not, we've never done this before, to this being a happy hour. We got oh, all the information lame. about Gather All Four. Luke is going to stay on for hours and take all your questions. Um, <laughs> but but let's, Joe's going to join. Make, Let's make sure Joe that everybody else has a moment. Joe, before we go, talk to us. First of all, what excites you about the future of James Bond and what excites you about Gather All Four? Uh, well, what excites me about the future of James Bond? Um, that's an interesting question because I, oh boy. <laughs> I know Oops. what he wants to say. Well, <laughs> nothing. Well, no, no, no. I, well, <laughs> well, <New> actor. <laughs> put it, put it this way. Um, I never would have guessed in my wildest dreams that a new Indiana Jones film would come out that I wasn't running out to see. Um, so I'm so scared to watch that film. I'm just gonna say I, I'm, I'm, I'm praying that the powers that be behind James Bond you know, know where to take this property. Um, Can we just have a fun James Bond movie? Can we just have a fun one with I'm, action I'm, I'm where you're board. air pumping at the end, like top, top yes, gun. I, I'm totally fine with that. A hundred percent. So I, I, I'm, I'm more um, rather than excited by what's coming. I'm, I'm more intrigued to see what's coming. You know, I'm, I'm really kind of hanging on, 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 you know, waiting for something to, to, to some news about James Bond, so I can get excited about the way they're going. Um, what am I excited about? Gather all for again. I'm a first and foremost. I'm I'm excited to see all all of my friends in the Bond community who come to these events um, and just have a chance to just meet and get reacquainted. Uh, I'm excited for everyone to see the clubhouse. I think I think this venue is spectacular. I think the people there are great and they are very excited to have us all. And, and I, and I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see what, how it's all going to transpire. Um, yeah. And just to have a good bond weekend with this crew. Um, I can't wait, frankly. Well said, but same question. What, what kind of gets you up in the morning that you're excited about James Bond? And of course, you know, what are you looking forward to most with gather all four? Uh, well, I hate the gaps, is. but I, I always love when there's a new bond actor. And, and there's a new take on the, the series and there's always that fear that they might mess it up. But, you know, um, I always, I always look forward to the introduction of a new actor. I guess you get to the run of an old actor and I kind of get tired of the guy. I'm like, all right, let's get something fresh here. So I'm just kind of chomping at the bit until we find out who it is. Um, gather all four. The thing I love about these larger events is that they, at least for me, they morph into smaller events. And, mm -hmm. you know, you make friends with people and then you end up being able to have smaller bond events. Uh, Jason Kim is in town around the corner here. We're going to go grab beers later this week. Um, it, it's stuff like that. Uh, my wife and I are Mark say from the, Jason Kim. Mark say from guy, Jason. Does this guy <laughs> work? Does Jason Kim like have Jason? A he just or? travels <laughs> around and has beers between Michigan and Maryland. Yeah. Make yeah. sure he nice, orders I his own he dinner. We're going to see a movie in like a day. <laughs> But it, it's it's stuff like that. <laughs> uh, you know, my wife and I are catching up with uh, Melanie from Burb, James Burb and, and British Bond Addict in a couple weeks and, nice. and hanging out. So I love how the big events and you get to see everybody, but then they kind of also morph into small events and new friends and, and you know, and getting to see everybody else, you know, once again. So. I love it. Luke, you get to bring us home, my friend. Excited about Bond. What is it? And of course, gather all four. I'm 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 uh, somewhere in the middle of Joe and Bud with their answers. I <laughs> probably am a little closer to the Joe side, even though I do I do agree with Bud. It it is exciting. I think that is the only thing I can say. I am excited, 
or I should say this, the only thing I am currently excited about when it comes to the Bond films is finding out who they cast. Outside of that, oh. I have no idea what can anything can happen, and it's it's very scary. I mean, I think it was Joe, uh, Joseph F in the uh, chat that mentioned something about, um, you know, like this kind of like hiatus and how it, you know, how you feel about it. And it's, I mean, I remember going to see No Time to Die and thinking I've only been doing the Bonds apartment thing for a year and a half at the time, and thought I kind of was gypped out of years of being a part of this community. I thought once no time to die came out and ended the way it did, I thought I was kind of, uh, you know, given the short end of the stick of, you know, all this different stuff I could be a part of, whether it's the sartorial side or, you know what I mean? It was kind of like, here it is. And you're done. I just had no idea what to expect. I still don't. So yeah, I'm excited to see who the new actor is, but other than that, I can't give you more than that with that aspect. And then gather all four is, for me personally, what kind of keeps the bond fuel burning? Everybody, the three of you gentlemen, and then everybody in the in the chat that's watching. That's what I get excited for. That's a great, great way to put it. And and I'll sort of add my own two cents. I think what excites me about Bond, I've I don't want to say I've given up. I've been realistic in the sense of not waiting for someone's announcement, someone's official announcement, which Unless it's official, it's all rumor, of course, and speculation. But getting excited about what the community does. I mean, you know, Bud puts out a new podcast. I get excited. Joe puts out a new video. Luke does a review. I get excited. I want to have my coffee. I want to get my coffee brewed and I smell the coffee and, you know, I consume all this. And I get excited about these little moments that we're all creating that are acting as a bridge to what hopefully will be a bigger moment, which is, of course, us getting excited around a movie. But I, I, I don't look towards a movie because I think it's almost this thing of like crashing hope sometimes of will it be 2024? Will it be 2025, 2026? I don't want to wait three years to be excited about James Bond. I want to be excited about now. So, you know, this coming Friday, there's some events in London. Saturday, there's the HMS Belfast. There's all these things that are happening in our lives because somebody got up in the morning and said, I don't want to wait. I'm impatient. Mm -hmm. I want bond in my life today. And that's what gets me excited. And I think that's why gather all four was born. So we hope to see a lot of you at gather all four, Joe, Bud, Luke, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, everybody in the chat room, thanks for having a drink with all of us. And as promised, we are going to remove David, Joe, and Bud, and Luke is going to stay for the next three hours to take your questions. <laughs> so this has been David Zeritsky for the Bond experience. We'll see you real soon. Take care. Please do it. Please do it. Oh, it's me and you, Bud. Oh, it's just me. Okay. Here we go. I've got a guitar. Should I grab the guitar? I can play one song. What should we say? And this is the best part about this is I first off, I know he's gonna cut me off. I know it's coming, but this is on his channel, so I can say whatever the hell I want to say. David, that was your cue. Get me out of here, man. Come on, I got things to do. I got places to go. People see. Come on, get me out of here. I'm uncomfortable now. <laughs> Alex, your wife is more than welcome. She's a gem. She's a gem. <laughs> I don't even know if I'm on mute anymore. Hey, Joe, what's up, buddy? Lloyd, whatever you whatever you choose. I was thinking um, something by garbage. Keep it coming. Keep it coming. <laughs>